with the continued lack of support from the console gaming community. Is E3 2019 going to be the springboard to put cloud gaming in dominance? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Hey, yo, before we get into this one, because this is going to ruffle some feathers, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because you know what? I'm not too proud to ask. Now, look, at the time of this recording, E3 2019 is right around the corner, right? Over the past few months, in really the past few years, console gaming support has dropped from the show trickle by trickle, okay? You even now have at E3 2019, the big kahuna, the big kahuna, the big dog in the house, Sony, as far as console gaming is, is concerned, is not showing up. Now you still have Microsoft that has a presence, Nintendo's gonna have a slight presence, you know, but as far as console gaming as a whole, you're not going to have the big stage, bang out, battle, brawl that gets gamers so hyped as far as console gaming is concerned. So with that said, a lot of people believe that E3 is now going to be obsolete. It's not gonna matter anymore. Well, you might wanna think about this a little bit. We're gonna get into one that again, like I said, it's gonna make some people, you know, question your boy's integrity but that's okay we, this is all about discussion okay but what i want people to think about is this is this mass exodus of console gaming support of e3 actually leading to a springboard for cloud gaming is cloud gaming going to take advantage of this vacuum of console gaming presence and actually start its dominance let's talk about it now you know how your boy do it. I like to chop it up in three parts. Let's talk about the presence that we already know about, right? Let's talk about, you know, some of the possible newcomers, you know what I mean, that can take advantage of this. And lastly, I'm gonna give you my thoughts. So first, let's talk about the big names that we know they're gonna, that are gonna be there in huge presence as it comes to advertising cloud gaming. First, we got Xbox with its xCloud. Now, as far as xCloud is concerned, it is supported by Azure, and Azure has the largest amount of data centers around the world. Xbox in the xCloud recently boasted that the service can stream 3,500 games without a single tweak from devs. And again, that support for the xCloud behind the technology, the support of it, it impressed their console rival Sony so much that they sign on and utilize Microsoft's Azure services for PlayStation Now. So that says a lot. Now let's talk about Google Stadia. It's the console-less uh, gaming approach that has sparked a lot of buzz in the gaming community, right? It, it, it displayed a seamless transfer of gameplay from device to device in one of their more recent uh, game showing. But more importantly, especially to your boy, they had a beta testing of Google Stadia, they called it Project Stream, where individuals like myself got to personally experience it. And I'm telling you, it made minimum stream usage perform wonderfully. Having that in my hands made a hell of a lot of a difference as far as my perception, as far as the capabilities of, of cloud gaming. So now we got the possible newcomers, right? We got Apple, okay? Apple introduced recently its Apple Arcade. Now we know as far as Apple is concerned, they have 1 billion downloads of games from the Apple Store. And they are looking to capitalize on this Apple Arcade with 100 exclusive and new titles at launch. And on top of that, they have recently announced that the Apple Arcade service will now support PlayStation 4 and Xbox One controllers. So these all don't appear just to be your Candy Crush type of titles, all right? I've taken a look at the website that they have set up right now, and it, 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 some of the games look a little interesting, you know what I'm saying? So, more to come on that. Then you even got Netflix. Now, come on, Netflix? <laughs> Netflix with over 139 million subscriptions, and many sources speculate of those subscriptions, there may be 400 million users within those subscriptions. Netflix is now looking to bolster its saturation within the gaming market by leveraging its viewers, okay? And again, that could be up to 400 million viewers. Now with that said, 
The service already supports one of the biggest gaming franchises in history via Minecraft Story Mode. And then on top of that, you got rumors that Walmart or maybe maybe even Amazon might be showing its 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 bed in the streaming uh, gaming uh, service market. So with all that in front of us, what are your boy MM2K's thoughts? Now, first off, I get it. There's been this big argument, you know, in social media about, hey, MM2K, this ain't going to dominate anything at all because, you know, a large portion of, let's just, just say the US market doesn't even have broadband. And I get that. But look at these uh, free to play games, right? But they're not free. And all these online games making so much money with the people that do have access to broadband already. You know what I'm saying? And that doesn't even say, you know, how many more people may be added into the future. I mean, you got games like Fortnite that again, they're labeled free to play, but trust me, you got parents spending around $100 in V-Bucks a week, you know, if they got multiple kids and so forth. So if they're willing to spend that, what is going to be a $20 subscription service or whichever one they pick a month, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be nothing to them. And again, we got to take into consideration how technology will go further down the road and bring broadband or 5g or whatever it is to these areas that currently don't have it so basically your boy is not arguing that streaming is going to take over consoles today however if google stadia the standalone streaming service impresses with this presence which will start the friday before e3 and then xcloud follows within e3 you know at the um xbox presentation and, and, it, and it shows strongly. Those two will then set the narrative for anyone else that will follow within this uh, game streaming services market. See, here's the conundrum that I think console gamers have unintentionally created. Possibly, if those two scenarios happen. Again, if Google Stadia knocks it out of the park and then Xbox follows up. See, they tried to downplay E3 as far as its most dangerous and potential effect when it comes to the gaming community. And a lot of them have done it in benefit of their favorite piece of plastic because their favorite piece of plastic isn't showing up at E3 on <laughs> PlayStation. See, what people are failing to realize is that yes, even though there were less and less uh, people showing up at E3 and less and less of a presence, that it's not the presence at the actual shows that give E3 its dominant footprint in the gaming community year after year, but it's the news that comes from E3 that dominates the airwaves for at least two straight weeks. I mean, let's think about it. The casual gamer at mass does not tune into E3. Usually it happens in the morning, people are at work, people got other stuff to do, okay? But all of the media line up, they fly out to LA or to wherever it's being held at year after year, and there is nothing but 24 7 coverage all right and everybody comes back they chop up all that footage and they got so much material they're blasting it for weeks upon weeks upon weeks that truly is the power of e3 and when you continue to have that blasting uh, of, of gaming news week after week after week it seeps out to the casual gamer whether they paid attention to e3 while it was happening or not and this type of saturation in news sets narratives, all right? So a lessened console presence may not only turn gamers, but the market into a frenzy as customers always want the latest and greatest and the market loves to, hit, to have more saturation and hear about more saturation with a new product or service. So again, due to the lack of console presence, if Google then Microsoft back to back, knock it out of the park with this streaming stuff. It could be the beginning of cloud gaming starting to inch towards the throne. Now again, it's not gonna be a process that happens overnight, but it's something that we definitely will keep an eye on and see how all this pans out starting with E3 or if your boy's just blowing a lot of hot air. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Only time will tell. But with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey yo, let me know what you think about what i had to say in the comment section below because who cares what i think but if you like what you heard from your boy you know where to find me i'm on the corner of every boulevard you know what i'm saying click the links below to follow me and yo i do a show with your people neethal snow bunny dirt riggedy it is called scram punks we do it every wednesday 
Mondays, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Dirk Griggity's channel. Check out hashtag ScramPunks for more information on that. Last but not least, support my brethren, the broadband bullies. We doing the damn thing. Check out that Discord link where it's popping. You know what I'm saying? Check out that Patreon link because we can't do this without your support. And check out that link to that gear because it's fly. And as always, as always, have a wonderful gaming day. And get yourselves ready for E3, man. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm excited. Have a good one.